Hi, everybody. Uh, it's Jeff Levy back with you and I uh, want to introduce uh, Jose Luis Silva, who is the uh, co-founder and managing director of Duke's Capital. A, um, it's a venture capital firm based in Austin and in Mexico City. And uh, uh, Duke's uh, really helps specializes in investing in Latin American, Latin startups, I should say, throughout Latin America and the United States. And uh, Jose Luis, look forward to hearing about you, talking a little bit about tapping into the startup ecosystem, which um, it, it's really interesting to come up at this point in time. We've heard some other presentations earlier talking about things like serendipity, asking for help. A lot of this stuff can happen in this ecosystem. So uh, Jose Luis, please take it away. Thank you very much, Jeff. And I, I also want to thank all the, all the team in One Business World uh, to, to inviting me to this session. I'm very glad to be here one more time. Well, thank you very much again. And uh, my name is Jose Luis Silva. And I'm the, as Jeff said, I'm the, the co-founder and managing partner of Loops Capital. We are a venture capital fund uh, investing in the Americas. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more, more on that in, in the presentation. And, uh, and I'm gonna focus uh, on, on, on some aspects regarding the, our startup ecosystem, which it's a, a, a complex one, a very good one to start off our, our own companies. And, and, and I'm gonna also specialize uh, uh, and direct my, my, my talk into venture capital, which is the, the industry in which we work right now. So uh, we have become a little intro on, on our fund. We have become one of the most influential VCs for Latins and let them startups as well. So both, whenever we see any DNA, Latin DNA, we can invest and we invest. And it can be a Latin DNA today or tomorrow. So we have invested in startups, for example, in the US that they want to go to Latin America and we are a good path to doing so. So we, or startups that have already worked in Latin America and, 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 or in the US, but with a Latinx uh, component, and we can invest in that as well. Uh, we, our drive is to change the world by investing in emerging entrepreneurs, in innovation, and of course in change. We're very passionate about it. And we are specialized in seed, uh, in early stage in investments, meaning that we are the first institutional to invest after a friends and family round, after a lender round, our VC uh, invest uh, uh, 750K in, in, in seed rounds, uh, $1.8 million in Series A rounds. Uh, we like to lead our investments as we, uh, as, as, as we are ex-investment bankers. Uh, so we, we like to vertically integrate what we do. And uh, we are very active, but non-invasive in, investor. Uh, we like to, to, to be part of the investment, to be part of the strategy and grow together with the startups in order to find an exit in which we like to see uh, a 10X uh, uh, exit multiple. And that's what we focus on. We hold 35% of our fund for, to follow on investments. Our unique approach, it's, 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 it's uh, our linchpin in which we uh, are a, a unique bridge between North America and the rest of LATAM in which, in which we take startups from the US or Canada to Latin America and the other way around as well. So we do that because we have the network, we have the language, we have the culture in both uh, uh, regions in Latin America and, and the US specifically. And, and that has become one of our most important differentiators. Uh, so that's my, my intro and what we do at the end of the presentation, I will send, I will show my, my email. So you can please send me an email in case you're raising, you're having some doubts or you, you want to even chat about entrepreneurship. I will be very glad to do so with anyone. So, uh, going into the, 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 the heart of the presentation, I want to start off by by talking a little bit about entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship is really hard. So uh, most of, of the audience have, have done it before, I've done it before, and, and failure, it's, it's a ghost that, that, that lives amongst us when we, when we 
and go and try to take off our new our new business. And uh, it is very hard because uh, a lot of things have to 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 align. First of all, most startups follow the same path. It is a path in which you start your idea and you have to start that idea by yourself or some co-founders and bring that idea to a product. Then when you have a product, you have to take that product to your local market. And, and, and that product market feed, it's, it's where most of the startups fail as well. And, and, and whenever you have that local market, you have to scale that, that local product and local market. Once you scale it, then you're, you're trying to see that product in a global market or a regional market. And then you have to scale that product in the regional market or the global market. And at the end of the day, some of these startups will follow the exit path in which it can be an IPO or a strategic sale. So the path is complex, but the, the most complex side to have this success when you make your own business it comprises a lot of factors that they have to align as well. Clients, suppliers, employees, uh, the right team, of course, co-founders, partners, infrastructure, technology, very important, investment, the market, the strategy, the users, the regulation, which is very tough, which is very tied to the government as well, local or global or regional governments or regulation, culture, very important working capital, which comprise a lot of, of, of aspects of, of, the, of the short term of your operations. The timing, it's, it's a, a very important variable, actually a, a little bit of luck and timing, it's also a variable. The product you, 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 you have to, to work on and you have to develop and you have to change over time the differentiation of your company, your team, your product, the, the actual team and all the finance side. So among others. So what I wanna, wanna uh, conclude on this is that a lot of variables have to, to be present when you, when you uh, make your own business that they have to align. And all, the, all, all these uh, uh, variables are against us because they have to align 90% of the startups fail in less than two years and 0.5% of them get a solid exit. Meaning uh, these big exits that we see some, some, some weeks, especially here in the US. So odds are against us. So uh, uh, entrepreneurship, it's complex, but it's a very fascinating uh, way of living, as I say it. And when you do it, there's a lot of, of, of gratitude and a lot of, of, of success when you do it right. And, but, but yeah, of course, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And I don't want to be pessimistic in my, in my previous slides. But uh, whenever you try to direct this toughness and these this odds that are against us, uh, you, do, you don't do it by yourself. So the ecosystem that, that, that we have in, in, in the US and in general in the Americas, it's a great startup ecosystem. And I, I really like this, this diagram because it depicts uh, the players and the organizations that help this ecosystem. I'm, I'm not gonna go into specific names, but I'm gonna go into specific uh, group names. So whenever you, you Google these uh, groups, you will find the most important groups in the US specifically or in the region that you're uh, working on. And, and, and these groups will help uh, startups in all the process and in all the, the life of, the, of, the, of, of your business. So first of all, support groups. There are a lot of nonprofits that help entrepreneurs such as, for example, here in, 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 in venture capital, there are a lot of associations that help the, uh, all the, the, the startups and the investors work together and suppliers and clients as well. There are a lot of organizations that are made for, for industrials, for commercial, for fintech, for different industries that are non, non-profit that will help the, uh, the whole ecosystem. Um, established companies, a lot of companies around the globe are doing corporate venture capital, for example, in which they help entrepreneurs to, 
to to integrate into these companies or even even investing in this in these startups to help them grow and to help the ecosystem uh, work. Of course, the educational institutions are a great, great, great actor of this ecosystem, and and I really like this event in one business world in this in this format, which because a lot of of the audience, I believe, it's from the educational side. So, in your universities, in your MBAs, there's a lot of of work going on uh, to help your your business uh, grow. Also. Uh, the funding organizations in which we we work, and I'm going to focus on that one in the rest of the of the of the slides. It is, of course, the the financial arm to support this whole ecosystem, together with the service providers, in which they are a very very important actor, such as lawyers, accountants, uh, audit firms, uh, uh, tech companies that will service the whole ecosystem in many ways. And at the end of the day, also research organizations that are amazing. Uh, there are a lot of research organizations that help with data to these uh, startups it, for, many, for many aspects of, of, of our growth, for uh, funding rounds, for uh, uh, research and development for your products, for, for research in general, for, uh, for clients, for customers, for suppliers, and that will help uh, the whole ecosystem as well. And the actors that are involved around this, this, these groups are, are very important uh, to us. Mentors, advisors, which work in all of these groups. Of course, investors. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the type of investors uh, uh, that we, we, we work in this ecosystem. Of course, entrepreneurs, which I say, the entrepreneurs are the rock stars of this ecosystem because that's where the whole thing starts in the, with entrepreneur. That entrepreneur, of course, hold ideas, inventions, and research, and, and the startups as well. And, and, and all these people related to the whole ecosystem, uh, we work every day to make this happen. So this is like, like a general uh, aspect of the ecosystem. And I want to emphasize in the funding organizations, in the for funding side. So before going there, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, 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 the Valley of Death, which depicts very nicely how, uh, the, how, how the, the startups and how the entrepreneurs, how we live. So we start with an idea. And, and, and well, this, this diagram depicts the profit uh, in the north side of the diagram and the losses in the in the in the south side. So most of the time we're in the in the south side of of the diagram because, as I said, it's very difficult and the odds are against us, especially when you start and especially in the early stage. So when you have a, a, a an initial idea, you typically go for an R and D. Then you go. You need to transfer that technology. Uh, once you have uh, a license for it or a, or a new invention for it, and 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 you you don't earn any money, so you you start going south uh, in terms of cash flow, and then when you when you when you launch your product, and 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 you do it with the help of of, of your funding rounds, and I'm not talking about funding rounds right now because that's the next slide, but uh, uh, seed as in every stage you are. Uh, having uh, uh, investment rounds around it. And uh, once you, 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 you launch a product and you have done, or you're doing a minimum viable product, it's when you're first going to this market and, and see who is going to, to, to buy your product and who, who, who likes your product. So this launch typically follows, uh, follows uh, uh, this MVP. And that's when the value of that starts. Because if you don't have any, any, if you have a product, but it's not gonna be bought or, 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 or accepted by any market, then uh, the belly starts to fall. And at the end of the day, if you, if you get to a product success, which it's the, the, the common divided, dividing line between early stage startups and the local support resources uh, around the product, and around commercialization, that's when the valley starts to go up. So whenever you have a product market fit and an MVP that it's a, a market that will help uh, 
uh, validate your product and your 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 culture. That's when the valley starts to go uh, north, and then the business success starts when you cross that line between profit and loss, and that's when the the startup st starts to go up. So this is uh, very important to 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 show because uh, all the funding rounds uh, follow this valley of death. And I really like this, this next diagram. Uh, and sorry if it's a little bit small, the, 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 the letters, but uh, you, here you can see the, the funding rounds and the life to become a, a, a successful uh, billion dollar company. So first you start with an idea by yourself then you typically bring a co-founder in which that stage uh, you will be most of the time uh, diluted into a 50-50%. Uh, you, as co-founders, you still have 100% of your company. Then uh, when you go out to the market, you go with, with the people that is more close to you, your friends and your family. And that's when you raise uh, uh, your first uh, external round. Uh, typically, the founders will dilute around 25%, including the option pool, which is very important. The option pool, uh, it's the, the stock that you uh, direct to your early uh, employees, the first employees that get in, you typically give them an option pool, you give them shares because there's small money, so you need to, to retain them with, with stock. And, and, and in order to, to align interest between the early uh, employees and the startup. And that's when, when, when you start a seed round uh, after that. Well, uh, the, the, the funding rounds, uh, they, they change, they vary, but uh, friends and family can be uh, 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 a round in which it can be valued at one, uh, one million dollars and it can be, go from 50K to 250K. And then the seed round in which actually that's where Duke's capital invests and also in series A, that's when you typically go into a post MVP, post minimum valuable product when you start having validation of a market, that's when you launch a seed round. And that's when angel investors and micro VCs and, and, and venture capital start to invest. This round can start in a $4 million valuation, $3 million valuation, and I've seen seed rounds up to $30 million valuation. And the, 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 the funding of them can vary between 500K and I've seen $10 million, $50 million raising. It depends on the type of industry you're working on as well. So once you, are, you start to grow and you move from being seed to start growing, then you go to a series A, which a series A it is a typical equity financing uh, round in which you can see that now you're diluted around 40%. That's when you lose, uh, 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 you go below the 50% control of the company. And you, you can see that here you can have angels, VCs, first employees, friends and family that, that will start uh, showing in your cap table. And finally, you go into the, into the IPO or billion dollar company stage in which you own a small part of your company, but that's when you, when you, when you grow and you go up. Uh, so venture capital, venture capital, uh, I, I love this, this picture because it's, it states, uh, I call it the wheel, but so far I've been unable to attack any VC. And it tells you a lot of, of, of of the ideas of the of the of the of, of, of the rounds of the of the way a startup starts and 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 it started off in 1489 with with Christopher Columbus that from the from the kings of Spain took took uh, some some 12k maravedis for 90 percent of profit. That's when 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 VC started as as I like to see it. And the story, the history of venture capital has evolved all the way from uh, risk capital brands, emerging focused uh, in investors, international funds, super angel and micro VCs in the, in the 90s, accelerators in the, in the 20, 2010s, uh, and the platforms that today we, we've seen in the, in the industry. And now the tendency is to go to crypto and NFTs 
in, in, in this story of, of VC. And in the US in the last decade, uh, it has boomed. Look at this hockey stick between 2014 and, and 2020. It's been a boom in venture capital, $753 billion in total funding since 2009. That's crazy. And it's the largest market in the world. And, uh, and the numbers are, are very favorable for, for who we, for the startups. So um, to, to rounding up, so uh, what we look for as a, as a venture capital, we look for great people. We look for differentiated tech. We look for a huge market and we look for high returns. So in general, this is uh, a, quick, uh, a quick dive into uh, what the ecosystem looks like. Of course, in these 20 minutes, we, we, it, is, it is a concluding uh, uh, presentation, but of course we can, we can uh, take a look into more, more into that uh, through my email or through additional questions you may have. That was great. I, 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 I wish there was more time to like just dissect and look at some of those charts. There's so many interesting things in there. Um, I, I had a, a couple of questions. You know, one <clears throat> is uh, the, the concept of differentiating yourself, but I also want to talk a little bit about or ask about um, the product itself. Sometimes, I mean, I've read the stuff about you can be the first one to a market and, and work on proof of concept, but there are other things. You can also be second to the market and do something in a different way. In other words, your competition could also open things up for you and answer some, answer the proof of concept before you kind of come out behind that. What are your views about that? Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Great question. So I, I follow to, to, the, to the data. So today in which a world that it's completely connected and information flows in seconds and we, are, we can get hold of that info in, 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 in your laptop in any moment. It's, it is very difficult to become uh, and have a first mover advantage. So we have the type of entrepreneurs that, that they really make things happen and make a, a, a first product that, that it's, it's the, the newest one in the market. But that, that is uh, the, 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 the very least side of, of, of entrepreneurship. The other side, it's the, the side in which you are the second, the third, the fourth, or you are a copycat. And that doesn't mean that you're not gonna make a really great business. And, and that doesn't mean that you will get funded. So there's a lot of, of startups that follow other startups in other parts of the world, but the, the, the opportunity to, to, to do that, probably it's not a new product to the world, but it, it is, will be a new product to a region or a new product to your community. So that's where I see the value. So. Uh, I like both sides of the equation, and I, I believe there's a lot of, of, of profit around it. And sometimes the first movers are not doing well. Uh, they do not do well because the timing is not the, the, the good one. And probably the second, third, or fourth incumbent is the one that it's hitting hard and hitting better uh, in right. the markets. Right. Um, and then, um, yeah, an another question I had was um, with regard to... Um, investing money do um do most of the founders that you deal with are they putting up their own money at all or is that something that they they rarely do and it's not really you know frown, it's frowned upon in a sense like use other people's money right is that what are you seeing in terms of the founder are they are they are they coming up with their own initial funding yeah so uh, there's two points on that the first one it's the, well the skinning the, the general skinning the game as we call it i divide it into two sides into cash that you own and you pour into your startup. That's really good to see. And, and I, I would probably see it in the 70, 70, 65% of the startups we receive. We receive 40 startups per week in, in average. And, uh, and the, other, the other point, it's time. And as time is money, if you put your time and you devote all your time to your startup, it's a way of skinning the game as well. So it's two points, cash and time. So wh whenever a startup or a founder has both, which of course they will uh, uh, some of the times, that's the best to have because you can have money, but no, you don't put your time and you put someone else to do that. I don't like that. Or the other way around, you can put only your time and not your money and the skin in, in the game is not complete. So that's the way I like to see. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And I think, um, you know, I'm going to ask, uh, you know, perhaps maybe one more question and, and, and we have like two minutes, but um, I'm really curious about this, the business plan that you get, and this may be too big of, if you can keep this to a minute and a half answer, but you know, everybody talks about failure or about how you start your plan and you have to change. When a business plan is put together for you, do you look for allowances for, for I won't say failure, but required changes? In other words, opportunities that if it's not working here, this is an alternative. Do they, is that ever built in or is that looked at after? Because everyone says, you know, you know, things are going to fail or not work the way you expect it the first time. I always see that and I, I always like to see that. And not only failure, but pivot as well. So a lot of startups, when they come in to ask for funding, I do like to see uh, second time uh, entrepreneurs, first time entrepreneurs that have failed or that have done a project that didn't go well or that pivot. I, I, uh, half of our portfolio have pivot. Pivot meaning that you started with, a, with one product and one idea and you saw that things were not right and you had to change that idea with your same startup but change the idea or product and go to another path. So I do like to see that because that's when we learn most of the time when in, in, in the bad in this valley of death that's when we learn the most so we like teams to learn and to be very receptive to to listen and to learn alongside with investors so founders are, are going in with the idea that they may have to pivot and they should be looking at pivot points all the time all yeah. the time yeah all the time every year every strategy you will always have to pivot uh, not 100%, probably can be less than that. And, and that's the way you, you, you make a business, I, I believe. Jose Luis, thanks so much. This was, this was fun. It was really good to hear from you. And, and uh, uh, I, I, I think your information on how to contact you, you, you've said it. I think we can find it in the speaker area so people can reach out to you. And um, we'll be talking very soon. Again, thanks so sure. much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Jeff. It's Clelios on One Business World. Thanks for inviting me. Our pleasure. Thank you.